Good morning. Uh, today we are having Dr. Matthew Kronje, a senior lecturer at the Department of Criminology. Welcome, Doctor. Thank you so much. And j just a lecturer, not a senior lecturer, just yet. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, doctor, can you share with us how did you become a researcher? Um, sure. So I've, I think since high school I was always interested in criminology and psychology and understanding essentially I think why people do some of the things that they do. Um, I, like many criminology students, watched way too much uh, CSI and Criminal Minds and all of those TV shows and then wanted to do that. So um, I started studying criminology and psychology, wanting to go work for the SAPS um, and then sort of realized that that route um, was going to take me a bit longer than what I, I expected. So I started really enjoying the research and started to really see some of the gaps um, of why it's important to do research in South Africa, especially on, on, on this topic. Um, so then, yeah, that just really started to interest me. Started working with uh, with NGOs and organisations during my postgrad studies, um, and that really, I think, just fueled that fire really to um, to want to do research, to see where the gaps are, to see um, what we can contribute as as, as scholars and as researchers. Um, and then I think, yeah, that's that sort of just sparked sparked that flame to to continue. Thank you. Uh, can you share with us uh, criminology? As a science, mm. how does it relate to law, biology, mm. psychology, and sociology? Sure. Um, so, yeah, I think so. Criminology is a multidisciplinary discipline, um, which is quite nice. And I think that's, that's also something that I really enjoy about it, is that we, we use psychological theory and research and sociological and legal and biological and economics and all of these different types of... of um, governance as well a lot um, in terms of those perspectives to see how do we understand um, crime and offending behavior um, as broadly as possible. So from the individual to societal responses to big policy and governmental responses, um, it's really about understanding this phenomenon as, as holistically as possible. So we, we do, we, we use a lot of, of theories that were originally developed in those, in those different disciplines um, to help us understand the, the context around offenders, because again, we know, you know individuals don't just wake up in the morning and decide to do crime. Yes. Um, so there's a lot of other factors that also come into play. So it's it's good to it's good for us to to understand what's happening in different disciplines um, and to know what the developments are there, so that we can apply it to criminology as well. Okay, thank you. Can you share with us uh, what are you currently working on? Sure. Um, so there's no sort of big research projects active at the moment. So I'm, I'm just trying to write um, when I when I get time in between teaching. Um, but uh, at the moment we are uh, working with. Um, I'm still busy publishing a, a few things out of my my PhD, uh, which was focusing on repeat offending behaviour. So why people once they've um, committed a crime or an offence, they've gone to a correctional centre or had some kind of formal sentence. Um, when that's finished, why do they continue with the offending behavior? So that's that's really where my area is that's, that, that I like to focus on. Um, so we're working on that, but also working with colleagues in psychology, um, publishing some papers there with, with, with data that's, that's available, um, also looking at sort of more um, interventions within the um, correctional context, and, um, and then also working with, with, with colleagues in other de departments and other program directors on... Um, teaching and learning research, so uh, working with some of the modules that we created in the social sciences, the new compulsory modules, um, social sciences in Africa and social science research, um, to basically see what the learning experience is there. So um, as a, on the criminological side of things, doing a bit of work there, and then also obviously from our, our teaching and learning perspective as well, um, looking at some insert, in, insights in terms of how are we teaching um, up and coming social sciences students. Thank you. Are there any exciting gaps within your field of study? Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I think uh, this is, it's always something I think I'm quite quite passionate about when we speak to students about, you know, students often want to know what, what can they do with this degree, where can they go, and my go-to is obviously always, always research, because I think, uh, as I mentioned, there's so much, there's so much that we still need to know. Um, I mean, crime's a, a big reality for us in South Africa. Um, it's something that affects 
most most people. Um, and it's always interesting because it's such a small percentage of the population who actually engage in offending behavior. Um, yet the, the impact of that behavior is so so vast. Um, so many, I mean, if you just turn on the news, it's, 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 it's news about crime and crimes. Uh, we currently, the crime stats have just come out, so there's a, it's a lot of speak about that, which is raising various concerns. Um, so I think, I think there's, there, there is a big gap for us to still know, you know, what, what is working. Uh, where are where do our challenges lie within the criminal justice context? Um, what what more do we need to know about, especially the whole decolonization argument um, around? You know, is the information that we have, the the theories, the methods um, that we're using, are they the best ones for our context? Um, could we go about doing research differently um, to understand really what is what does crime and victimization look like um, within the South African context? So. Um, I think it's an exciting time for, for criminology as well. Um, we're, I think, yeah, we're, we're starting to decolonize. We're looking at different approaches. We're trying to, we've, we've done a lot, um, yet we still have a very high crime rate. So we need to, we can really still keep digging into those things to see, you know, what are the actual problems and what are the solutions that we can bring? Um, because I think, I, I do very firmly believe that it's, um, there's so much great knowledge on, on the ground level in terms of the, the NPOs and the NGOs that, that work with offenders and victims that have such a great understanding of what, what is actually needed um, to both support victims but also to help offenders to, to not continue with that kind of behavior. Um, but again, there's that, that's where academia needs to come in. We need to, we need to have that connection with, with what's happening on the ground um, you know, so we can write the reports and do all the fancy stats and make everything look all official um, to be able to convey that message um, at the end of the day because I think you know we need to work together to to get that across because um, I don't think we we don't know how to address crime in, in, in South Africa but um, I think it, it takes we need a lot of input um, and we need a lot of role players to to see the same picture um, so that we can actually start to address things. Okay. Thank you. Coming back to crime mm. there are different views, uh, one quoting that there will, uh, those who view that uh, criminals are, are victims of social conditions mm -hmm. and then there is other view that uh, uh, crime is a, a choice, a free choice of an individual. Mm -hmm. So what's your take on that? So I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a typical academic and, and say that it's 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 a little bit of both. <laughs> so I wouldn't really take a hard stance on 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 one of those because I think again, um, offenders are people just like everybody else. Um, they they have circumstances, they have context, and um, they have capacity, they have resources that that differs, um, just like any other person. Uh, and like I mentioned earlier, you know. I don't believe somebody just simply wakes up one day and decides to go do crime. Um, I think there is there is an element of, of choice to it. Um, there is, I think, definitely a role that, that our, our social circumstances play. Um, but uh, I don't think we can simply just say it's, it's one or the other. Um, I think it depends on the offender, it depends on the type of crime, um, it, it's, it depends yeah, on a lot of different factors. And um, I, th I think to, to simply say um, it's because of the social circumstances. Also, takes away from the responsibility that's on the offender, um, that they also did participate or partake in that behaviour. Um, and if they can't take responsibility for that, um, then it, it becomes very difficult in that sense from a rehabilitation perspective. Um, but also, you know, then it, it also leads to stigmatisation of other people who, who live in those same contexts. Um, often, people from lower socioeconomic status, certain racial groups, certain gender groups are often associated with offending behavior. So if we simply say, oh, it's because of society, then everyone who's part of that is, is potentially high risk, um, which I think is a very dangerous space to get into because you start to stigmatize groups of people, you start to stigmatize people um, based on things that they have no choice in. Um, you know, we, we unfortunately don't get to choose where we're born or what our socioeconomic status looks like or any of those kinds of things. And um, there are many people that are still making good constructive choices in that space. Um, so I think it's, 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 good. it's good to be aware, it's good to understand the, the, the different factors associated with it, um, but I think it's, it's important to understand the human um, as, as, as holistically as possible and why they did that. Um, and look at, you know, from an intervention perspective, 
what can we control, what can we potentially change for this person, um, but also to recognize that there are some things, you know, we unfortunately cannot, in, for example, South Africa, where we have such a high unemployment rate, uh, we, we, we can't simply just employ every offender, um, because there are people who have not committed offenses, who are, have been law-abiding, have stuck by the rules, so to speak, um, and they also can't find employment. So um, it's a, it's, it, it becomes a difficult thing in that space. And then on the flip side, obviously, we can't simply just say that it's always a choice, uh, because again, we know that there are people living in, in, in difficult circumstances, um, where once you see their whole story and see where they come from and what they've been through, you kind of sometimes sit and maybe it's just because we're criminologists, but you look at those stories and you're like, well, it makes sense. Um, I think if I were in that same situation, I might have made similar choices. Um, so, so yeah, I think uh, it's, a, it's, it's a long answer to your question, but I think it's important <laughs> to, to look at both. I think it's, it's important. All right. Thank you very much. And then taking into cognizance the artificial intelligence, mm. what impact or role it will play in the field of uh, criminology? Okay. Um, yeah, so that's an interesting space at the moment. I think... Um, it can it can play quite an interesting role in in a number of ways. I think um, in terms of, of research, obviously, um, you know, big data is is where things seem to be going. The more information we have about people, which sort of speaks to the previous answer as well, um, the more information, the more data points you have on an individual, the the better you you can potentially predict their behaviour. Um, that, I guess that's what the sort of theory would say. Um, so I think artificial intelligence could play a really interesting role there in terms of being able to collect um, and uh, obviously utilize data that, that can assist with that. Um, we are, again, I think fortunate um, in that sense also that our legislation with the new Popular Act and all of those things also um, safeguards against the abuse of that kind of information as well. So I think, I think AI um, is, is, is creating uh, uh, interesting changes, I think, for the good in terms of being able to process mass amounts of, of data. Um, I know, you know for in terms of law enforcement, AI is being used to identify potential offences, um, to uh, gather data to identify uh, potential offenders before they actually commit um, a, a certain offence. Um, when it comes to surveillance, obviously also quite a controversial topic because it also speaks to issues of human rights and privacy and that as well. Um, so, so yeah, I think I think AI brings an interesting dynamic in terms of how we can use it to to further criminology, but also in terms of how it can be used by offenders to to commit more elaborate offences as well. So we have to be aware of you know what what are people doing with with artificial intelligence as well to to actually um, to commit new and, and, and different types of offences, um, and how can we counter that using that same AI. So, um, yeah, for me, it's, a, it's, it's an interesting space, um, and I think it's got a lot of application. Um, even, again, just, you know, looking at risk, uh, risk profiling, um, offender profiling, uh, monitoring and valuation of interventions, um, artificial intelligence could, could play quite a big role. Um, so, yeah, I think, uh, I think on both ends of the coin, or both sides of the coin, I think AI is, is definitely going to change um, our environment. It's going to change the way that we look at it. Uh, victims and offenders and their experiences. Um, whether that's good or bad yet, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see, I think. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. And then, what message can you share to aspiring researchers? Um, I think, I would say, sort of, there's, there would be a few things, which I think I, I try to share with my class quite often as well. Um, I think firstly is, is to, to really know, like, to find out if this is really what you want to do. I think that's, that, that's quite an important thing. So, you know, to, to, to get involved in your community organizations, to get involved at the SAPS, at the Department of Social Development, um, try to, try to be exposed to, to what's happening, um, around you, but also, you know, be exposed to offenders and victims and working with them because it's, like I mentioned, the reason I, got interested in this is, you know, you watch Crime and Investigation Channel or all these things and it's very exciting. You read books about serial killers and all these people that have done all these things and it's all very interesting and it, it gets romanticized a bit sometimes, um, whereas the reality is often quite different. So um, I think I would, I would really encourage young people to, to, to go out and be exposed. Um, go and volunteer. Go and, go and uh, you know, spend some time with, with um, 
organizations that, that, that maybe assist with either marginalized communities, because again, it helps you to understand victimization a bit, a bit broader, um, or who are working with people who are at risk, uh, whether it's young people or older people, um, just get exposed. See, see what this, what this world looks like. Um, and then, and then from there, I think make, make informed choices. Um, because again, I think I truly do believe that, um, the research that we're able to do within the criminological space and with the social sciences space in general, I think as well, um, can really be used to make a difference. Um, and I think the more consistent we are with that and the more, um, Goal directed we are with with, with how we apply ourselves, um, the more change we can actually make. So um, yeah, I think I think it's it's good to have collective efforts. It's good to have um, these collective ideas that 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 can push us into a space where we can actually do um, you know solve the problem instead of working with so many different things and different levels of it and sometimes doing some of the same work. Let's 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 all push together. Let's all push into the same direction and and, and get get things done. You know. Um, but take into account that there are so many different views and so many different factors. You know, it must be a, a diverse collective. Um, I think in that sense, uh, it's, it's, which I think is important. It so must, must stay away from from one track mind thinking, but rather, rather you know, acknowledge, and accept the different views that are around. Because this is this is what we need. We need to understand our context. We need to understand human beings as holistically as possible. Um, but let's let's find a common ground where we can where we can move together. Thank you so much, Doctor. And then, apart from research, what are your other interests? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think outside of this space, um, I, I exercise a lot, I guess, like trail running and, and uh, ultra marathons and things like that. Um, I think that, that would be where I spend uh, <laughs> most of my time outside of that. And obviously, friends and family time also also very, very important as well. So, um, yeah, I think uh, trying to be, be healthy um, across the board. I think academia, we spend a lot of time behind computers and uh, can be sedentary um, quite often. So I think it's good to, to have some balance in your life also. So to, to get out and be active and, and be, be healthy holistically, um, you know, mind, body and, and soul. It's all, 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 all very important things, I think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you so much yeah. for sharing with us, Dr. And then from what in conclusion, mm. what we have learned now, Having the understanding of crime, it will shape us to know how to handle the, the criminals mm. and then also the juveniles and also as a society, how do we react to, to crime? Mm. So we thank you so much for what you have shared with us. Awesome. Thank you so much and thank you for this opportunity. I think this is, this is really exciting. Thank you, Doctor. Thanks. My pleasure. Thank you.